Hey everyone, welcome back to the Analytical Coding. We are in part 4 of our Time Intelligence series. In today's video, we will cover very important functions and they are date at, dates between and dates in period. So let's get started. First one is date add. So this function is used to shift the dates forward or backward by a specified number of intervals like days, months, quarters or years. So here you can see the syntax of date add function. So the first argument is the dates that is a column of dates usually from a date table and the second argument is number of intervals that means an integer that is positive or negative number to move forward or backward based on the third argument that is interval. So here the interval can be a day, month, quarter or year. So this function returns a table of dates where each date is shifted based on the interval. It does not return a range but just the shifted values. So let us see an example to understand this clearly. So here you can see we are using the calculate function for calculating the sum of orders amount and we have given the filter that is date add of this date column that is cal auto of date whichever the date column in the date table and in the interval I have mentioned one and I have used the month as the interval. So let us add this measure into this table to understand how this works. Okay. So here you can see for each date it returns orders amount. So let us see how this is being calculated in the backend. So here we have given the 1st December 2024. So this is the first row, right? So for this first row, this measure will calculate in the way that is. So here we have given the first one that is the date column. So for the date column, here the row context is 1st December, right? For the 1st December row, this date add function returns the 1st Jan 2025 because we have mentioned that number of intervals to add that is 1. Here we have given in the positive number. So it will be adding to the given date and the interval is month. So this date add function will return 1st Jan 2025 and then this calculate function will calculate the sum of orders amount for 1st Jan 2025 and returns that value in front of this first row that is 1st December and you can see here the orders amount for 1st Jan 2025 is 4230. Similarly, for the 3rd December, you can see we are getting 3184. That is, for 3rd December, this date add function which we have given will return the 3rd Jan 2025, right? And for 3rd Jan, you can see 3184. So, in this way, this date add function returns the date after or before the specified interval, right? So let us see what happens if we add the day, right? So whenever we enter into the third argument, we will be having these four options to select. So let us see for the day. Now you can see for 31st December, so this date add function will return the first Jan, right? Because we have told that date add function to add one day to the selected one. Here it is filtered for the 31st 12 in this first row. And that is why for the 31st 12, 2024, this date add function will add one day and returns the first Jan. And this calculate function will calculate the orders amount on 1st Jan 2025. So in this way, you can see for 31st Jan, orders are 4230, that is 1st January. And for 2nd Jan, you can see for 3rd Jan, we are having 3184 and that is being displayed. So here we are calculating the orders amount for the next day. Right. So in this way, we can use this date add function. And you may ask me that what is the difference between date add, e date, and evo month? Right. So here, listen carefully. Date add is more flexible than e date or evo month because it supports multiple intervals like day, month, quarter, and year. Whereas in case of e date or evo month, we provide the date and those functions return the exact date or month in date before or after the specified number of months only. So it only takes the month as the interval. 
but in case of date add we can provide the interval to consider as well right so here we can provide the interval as day month year or quarter so if you want to know clearly about e date or evo month please do refer to my video in our channel i have added the link in the description so moving on to the next function that is dates between so this dates between function returns a column of dates that begins with a specified start date and continues until a specified end date so here you can see dates between will take the first argument as the dates that is a date column and second argument is the start date and third argument is the end date right so this dates between function returns a continuous date range between the given start date and end date so let us see an example to understand this clearly so here i have written a measure where i have taken the start date as the 1st january and end date as the 3rd january so here i have created the variables for the start date and end date and here i have calculated the sum of order amount using this filter dates between and here i have provided the start date variable and end date variable which we have created here let me add that measure into this card okay so here you can see 7414 that is on 1st jan we are having 4230 right on 3rd jan we are having 3184 so the sum of these two dates is 7414 because here we have provided the start date and end date and if we provide any other date so it will be considering those dates and will be returning the sum of order amount for this range of dates so the dates between function returns the range of dates between the specified start date and until the specified end date so here you can see the value is changed and this value is the sum of first to sixth jan and let us consider instead of providing the start date and end date what if we want to give the start date and we need two months of dates from the given date so that can be achieved by dates in period function so this dates in period function returns a fixed length window of dates starting from a given date and going forward or backward based on the interval so here in this syntax you can see the first argument is the date that is a column of dates and the second argument we have to provide the start date so from which date we have to calculate the dates so that date is the start date argument and the third one is number of intervals and that is the number of periods that is positive or negative and here the interval can be day month quarter and year and this function returns a continuous set of date from the start date for the number of intervals provided so let us see an example to understand this clearly so here i have written a sum of order amount and here the filter is dates in period and the first argument is date column and the second argument is selected value of cal auto date so whichever date is selected from this column so that date is the start date and from that date here i have given the number of intervals that is 28 and the interval is day 28 days so this dates in period function returns a continuous set of dates from the selected value of the date to the 28 days so in this way dates in period returns the 28 dates from the selected date and this calculate function will calculate the sum of order amount and whenever i add this measure into this table so here you can see for the 5th december 2024 it is showing 4230 that is first jan order amount so from the 5th december 2024 the 28th day is 1st jan and the sum of order amount we do not have any data for 2024 year our data is starting from the 1st jan 2025 the 28th day for this particular day is 1st jan and that is why as there is no data until 31st december it is considering the 1st jan data that is 4230 and again for the next date you can see we do not have any data for 2nd jan that is why we are getting the same value as 4230 coming to the 7th december so the 28th day from the 7th december 2024 is 
3rd Jan 2025. So it will be calculating the sum of orders until the 3rd Jan that is 4230 plus 3184 and which results in 7414. So in this way for each date it will be calculating sum of orders amount for the next 28 days. So in this way we can use the dates in period for calculating the rolling 7 day windows, 28 day windows and 90 day windows from any date. So this dates in period is driven by interval length not an exact end date like dates between right so it is often used in time series charts and rolling matrix and if you have any doubts in these three functions that is date add dates between and dates in period please do comment in the comment section happy to answer if you want this video helpful please do like share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching